I think anyone going into to politics here, you have your clear ideas of what you want to achieve. But I think what we don't know and what we didn't know when you stand there is, well, you're an MLA for the first time. And there's an awful lot of learning on processes and the procedures. And what has happened on each assembly is we've increased the amount of training MLAs get, whether they've been on before or, or, or newly appointed. Because that's essential that you all as group of eight set off and recognise you need to learn about your job. I think it's quite interesting the difference in the way things are handled now to they were back in 1997 when I was first elected. Um, new members now, in fact all members are sort of briefed on all sorts of things, they're given training in media training, all this sort of thing. We just turned up and we, we sort of, uh, I was told what what people suggested I took as portfolios and had to go into it. Really, there is no, there is just no substitute for knowing what, or understanding what you're getting into. I mean, knowing how, what the structure of government is, understanding how it, how it functions and how it works, um, and, and then knowing as much as you can about what's current and what's live and what's going on as you can. I think the main bit of advice is expect your life to change. It will take over your life. Um, it's frankly delusional to think that you can do it part time because people can't necessarily come and see you with their problems in office hours, so they will stop you in the shop. They will phone you at very odd hours of the day and night sometimes. But you've really got to commit to that. And, you know, you can make clear breaks. You can work on some sort of balance. The most important thing is to remember it's a very steep learning curve when you're first selected. Um, you know, it, it is totally different from your opinion as a, as a member of the public. You actually realise there are reasons behind some decisions which you thought were really a bit ridiculous, but uh, there are reasons for a lot of things. And so you need to be able to, while keeping your um, principles, you need to be able to understand how the, the whole government works. What I would like to see the new candidates do is commit to having more debates. Now that might seem easy, but when you've been talking around a subject together outside of a legislative assembly for a while, it's difficult to find two people perhaps who want to debate. And you have to have two people. Somebody has to propose a motion, someone has to second it. We haven't done as much as that as we should have done. And, and I'd like to see that our new assembly tries to increase the number of debates that happen. I particularly remember the one we had on assisted dying, which was not government policy at all, but it was something the public felt very strongly about, and that was a very successful and a very interesting debate. So more of that. To misquote Lincoln, if you like, Abraham Lincoln, I mean, you can, you can please some of the people all of the time and all of the people some of the time, but you're never going to please all of the people all of the time. He used the word fool, by the way, but uh, not so <laughs> cynical as all that. And I think you just have to remember that, that the compromises are going to have to be made. Um, and, and that is just part of, of what you have to do. You have to remember that you're a team of eight. Isn't you? You're not just on your own. You have to work with the rest of the team. And so it's a very interesting time, but uh, I think the most important thing is to actually listen to all you're told and just uh, analyse what, what comes out. There's an awful lot of reading, but you have to do it, because if you're not well prepared, as in any job that you do, Preparation is the key to success. Nobody can expect every MLA to be absolutely um, aware and knowledgeable and capable of talking about everything in equal depth. But I, I would be wary of responses like, it's not my portfolio, or I don't understand the issues, or yeah, I don't understand, uh, I don't understand anything about X, Y or Z. Um, because that's just not going to instill a great deal of re respect. You know, try and be aware at least of the um, of what's going on 
broadly around your portfolio. And if you don't know about something, you don't understand it, go and find out. Um, you know, it's not going to instill a great deal of respect if you're voting on something when you've been heard to say, I don't understand it. When you are elected, you're elected to represent everybody in the Falkland Islands, be they a sixth generation Falkland Islander, or be they someone from Sri Lanka who's just arrived on the latest delayed flight to work here. You represent everyone. And if you feel you can't represent everyone in our community, then perhaps you shouldn't stand. And I think that when people come to vote, be conscious that the people you're voting for are there to represent everyone in our community, not just white Anglo-Saxons, but the other people from the other 60 nations that we happily say make up our community. Enjoy it. Don't see the sort of social things and events you have to in attend as a, a task. See it as an opportunity to talk to your constituents in all sorts of informal situations. They won't necessarily come to public meetings. Not everyone likes to speak in public. A lot of people think Facebook is so awful they won't go on it. So if you really want to know what people think, get out among them and talk to them. I would ask the new candidates to be conscious of their own mental health and of their colleagues. I think in the assembly that had just dissolved recently, quite a number of us suffered from mental health problems during our time as councillors. So be kind to each other and look after each other.